be prepared this morning because I didn't spend any time reading my Bible this week. So I'm just going to sit here for a few minutes and not say anything. Is that okay? Nope. I'm just going <laughs> to think I'll just sit here because I didn't have any quiet times this week and I'm just be quiet. What do you think? That's what sometimes people, I think, do with their lives. They don't spend time in the Word each week, each day, and then they expect people who, they come to church and they expect people to get up in front of them and share what they learned that week in church. Why not spend time each day ourselves in God's Word and guess what will happen? What? A relationship. Oh, Matthew. Or Matthew, you guys didn't get the... Ugh. Or Matthew 26. Right? Wouldn't that be a shame? Like I said last week, wouldn't it be a shame if Pastor Matt just showed up and he sat there for 45 minutes and didn't say a word? Why? Because he spent no time in his word that week reading each and every day. No time in prayer that week. Right? And forbid spend any time with like-minded people. Why show up at church on Sunday morning? Why? So let's just uh, allow me to share with you this morning. 26, 18. I thought I gave him a slip. Maybe I gave him a slip. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Buenos dias. That's a um, good morning in Spanish. Okay. Roberto gets a little confused when I speak in Spanish. I help him a lot. He replied, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says, My appointed time is near. I am going to celebrate the Passover with my disciples at your house. Read this a different way with me. Go into the city and tell Paul. Go into the city and tell Matt. Go into the city and tell Joan. What? Hmm. The teacher says, my appointed time is near. I'm going to celebrate the Passover with my disciples in your heart. Huh. It says house. And it says a certain man. But what if it said, go and tell in this city and tell Sarah that the teacher's appointed time is near. And I'm going to celebrate the Passover in Sarah's heart. Wouldn't that be a different way of thinking? Keep in mind, New Testament, not Old Testament. Read a little more with me. So the disciples did as Jesus directed them and prepared the Passover. Okay, that's a lie right there. How many times do we do what Jesus tells us to do? Not very often. <laughs> Sometimes we find ourselves doing the opposite of what Jesus tells us to do. And we don't prepare for the Passover. We don't prepare the house, the heart, right here. But this scripture says they did what they told them to do. But sometimes, me as a Christian man, I don't listen 100%. I don't take the time to prepare the heart, the Passover, the house. I have to get up in the morning and read my Bible? Put down in prayer? Prepare the house for the Passover. One evening came, Jesus was reclining with the, at the table with the twelve. Jesus was reclining at the table with Paul, with the Berto, with Kathy. Right? I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me. What? Uh, what does that mean? Uh, must be Lou. Must be Luigi. <laughs> Gotta be Luigi. Right? Listen to this part, ready? They were very sad and began to say to him, one after the other, surely, surely not I, Lord. How many times have we done that ourselves? Lord, surely not me, God. Oh, it is me? Oh, wait, wait. Well, let me find someone else to blame. It's easier that way, right? But don't we say that to our, we don't find ourselves saying that to God sometimes? Surely not I, Lord. Not me, I didn't. No, not Luigi. Then I look in the mirror. Oh, don't ever do that. Look in the mirror, I guess you see looking back at you. So surely not I, Lord. <laughs> Jesus replied, the one who, who has dipped his hand in the bowl 
with me will betray me. I substitute a goal with uh, different things we do in our lives, like say sin. Right? Different things that we allow to happen in our lives on a regular basis. It says the uh, dips the sand of will betray me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him. Thank, thank you, Heavenly Father, for that. But woe to the man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. You know, I was thinking about that part of the scripture when I was reading this this week. Actually, last week I was reading this, preparing for. And it says to me, it says here, but woe to the, but woe to the man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him as he had never been born. And I was thinking about that. And here's what I was thinking. Do I want my life to be a failure? Do I want to look back at the time that I spent in my life and realize that I wasted time in my life? Does any of you who know me know that I believe when does my eternal life start? Now. My eternal life starts now. Not after I'm dead and gone. Because once I accepted Christ as my personal Savior, the Holy Spirit lives with me. Right and where do I sit? I sit at the right hand of the Father, which gave Christ Jesus himself today. So I was just reading that, and I was thinking to myself, go into the city and find Luigi. And tell him that we're gonna, I want to prepare to celebrate the Passover in, in his heart. See, and... and and I think that that's important that we understand as Christian men and women that Jesus always wants to pass over every day in our heart, the Lord's Supper. And remember to do it in remembrance of him. Remember, so the only things that he ever asked us to do in remembrance of him was take the Lord's Supper. So I just look at this passage of Scripture which leads up right to the Lord's Supper. I look at this passage of Scripture sometimes and I think we overlook it because we jump right to the Lord's Supper. When in reality, he's instructing us how to prepare ourselves for the Lord's Supper. He's preparing us. Let's see here. Ephesians. Philippians. Philippians 2 1, which is right about where uh, Daisy was this morning. How do we prepare ourselves? If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, yeah. if any comfort from his love, real quick, you guys know that he was not writing to the world when he was writing this Philippians? He was writing to the Christians in Philippians. Think about that. Um, if any tenderness or compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded having the same love, being one in the Spirit. So, prepare your hearts for the Lord's Supper, the Passover. He's asking us to open up our hearts and allow Him to be there. Why? Because woe be the man who betrays Christ. And I, I look at it this way. I don't want to look back on my life here on earth and say that it was wasted. Look, I wasted 45 years of it. I literally flushed it down the toilet. I wasted it. Doing everything that I wanted to be doing. And not anything that I felt God should have me doing. But I'm not going to waste the second half of my life. I, I want to share the gospel with people. I want to share my salvation with people. And that's why to me it's important that we prepare our hearts for the Lord's Supper. And really take this for what it really is. This is a remembrance of Jesus Christ himself. Let's go to the, this, the certain man. Let it be us. Let us prepare our house for him. So when he comes, well, guess what? We're ready for him. We're ready for him. Um, can I have the men come forward, please? For the Lord's Supper? So, um, and I'll be sharing a little more, but in, um, in April... Uh, looks like it might be the 23rd of April. Um, I will be sharing my testimony here in the church. So, people you have in your lives, you think there's no way in God's earth that they can ever, ever change. If you can get them here that day, it would be a good day to get them here. 
Any day would be a good day, but that day would be a good day to get here. Because um, I plan on pulling no punches that day because I think the important thing, well, the thing is, is this, keep in mind too, when I share, I'm going to share about testimony, I'm not going to share about what I was doing in the past. I want to share what Jesus is doing now in my life, from October 2nd, 2010 to current. See? And those are things that I think that sometimes we get confused as Christians when we share them. Right? Let's share what the life is we have right now, living in the light, and how important that is. How important that is. You know? Preparing our hearts every day, our houses every day for communion. Not just, oh, you know what, I'm going to go to church on Sunday morning. Guess what, I'm going to feel good for about two hours, and I'm going to go back into whatever I'm doing. Whatever that is. But guess what? You don't have to live that way. You can live Sunday morning church service every day in your life, every hour. How? Right here. Heavenly Father, we just come before you, Lord, and we just ask that this be once again be your service and our hearts, your hearts be open, Lord. All hearts be open to who you can be in people's lives. Truly be in their lives by allowing them to prepare their heart for you. And I pray this in King Jesus' name. Amen. that first half that passage the first couple times I didn't, didn't think about putting my name in those spots. You know, I read the Bible a lot that way now. You know, when I'm reading a passage and it touches me, then I kind of put my name in there. You know? When Jesus told him to go see a certain man, you know, he said, go see Luigi. Tell him to prepare his house. Time is coming. And, uh, you know, when we look at Judas, a lot of times people say, oh, Judas, oh, Judas, oh, Judas. We all have a little Judas in us, but we used to. And we give that to the Lord. While they're eating, Jesus took the bread, he gave thanks, he broke it, he gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat, take and eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he offered it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood, the covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Thank you very much, King Jesus, for coming and doing the things that you did for us on Calvary. Thinking more importantly that when you went to the grave and you came resurrected from the grave, you left my sin in that grave, Father, uh, Jesus Christ. And I thank you for that. In King Jesus' name.